Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about the ENFP in the Enneagram. And the Enneagram is a perfect way to understand subtypes in the MTI because each Enneagram changes how you think. Every Enneagram represents a core insecurity and that changes your behavior. How you have been taught to act changes what you do and how you act and it changes how you express your dominant personality type. And so each Enneagram is going to make the ENFP look slightly or sometimes very different from the other. So the Enneagram 1 brings up the insecurities we have in following and obeying the rules of the system. The Enneagram 1 represents our voice of reason, of pragmatism, of adhering to an external standard and of pressuring ourselves to fit norms and expectations on us. And the Enneagram 1 is a perfectionist in the sense that they try to adhere and adjust themselves to external principles of how to be rather than internal principles of what you want to be or what you think is right. And that means the ENFP 1 has to compromise this core part of themselves that represents change and honesty. The ENFP 1 has to adjust their standard of honesty and change so that it becomes pragmatic. They have to dismiss all ideas that don't fit with their expectations. They have to adjust what they say and what they express publicly so that they can live up to and honor the expectations on them and so that they can remain true to the rules and principles of the society. The Enneagram 2, on the other hand, adjusts themselves to the expectations they receive from other people. What do other people need from them? What can I do for other people? How can I be of help to others? Those are the questions of the ENFP 2. They want to be good. They want to do the right thing. They want to fit themselves with other people's expectations. And once again, this requires you to somewhat hold back your personal curiosities, your personal interests, your personal needs. It requires you to, in some ways, uh, repress your freedom and your need to express yourself and to be yourself and to be a free spirit. ENFP 2s can kind of become captives of the people they feel a need to serve and to help. They devote themselves to someone but they kind of adjust themselves and repress their own freedom and inhibit themselves for the sake of someone else. ENFP 3s conform to an external standard of beauty. They adjust themselves to what other people find beautiful and pleasant and they try to shape and become and be what other people find to be pleasant and beautiful and entertaining. They lack a strong personal standard of what beauty is and instead mold and shape themselves according to an idea from an audience or a perceived audience and they try to become popular because they can't find that satisfaction in themselves with who they are they try to become popular and get appreciation from others for how they look and for how they appear ENFP 4s hold on to a traditional idea of who they are they conform to and hold themselves captive in the expectations or the ideas they had about themselves or who they used to be in the past. The ENFP 4s seek to remain true to themselves and to protect their individuality and believe in a sense that the world is a bad or hostile place and that there is no point in doing anything. They keep themselves by telling themselves this from truly going out and pursuing change and doing what they want and being free because they think it is not possible. Instead, they focus on their personal beliefs and their personal situation and what is right to them inside. ENFPs with a strong social instinct adjust themselves to what everyone else likes. In the pursuit of gaining friends and connecting with people, they become what everyone else will like. They always try to make sure they say the right thing and that they do the right thing and that they act in the right way and they dress according to what people expect. With the pursuit of fitting in, not of being popular, but of fitting in. And in doing so, they can repress to some extent their need for freedom, their honesty, and what they personally think is right inside, and what is authentic and true to them, they can lose that inner voice of what is true to me then, because they are so focused on what everyone else thinks. The sexual ENFP is just trying to be free, just trying to express themselves, just trying to 
be who they are. Just speak out and just stand up and have fun and just release and remove themselves from all chains and inhibitions. But to some extent, the sexual ENFP can somewhat hide from and avoid pressures and expectations and challenges. Seeking to have fun and to be free, they can avoid all kinds of tests and jobs and expectations and challenges that can kind of put pressure on them or that can make them feel controlled. Self-preserving ENFPs are always trying to take responsibility for everyone and everything around them. They have to make sure that everything is right, that everything will work out, that everyone's ideas and everything everyone wants will pan out. They try to keep the ship afloat, but they fear their own voice and they fear their own power. They fear putting the ship off course or accidentally putting the ship in the wrong direction. And so they trust others' voices more than themselves. They repress what they think for the sake of making sure that the system prevails and that things hold on and that things remain secure. The, the ENFP5 is always trying to be smart about things and that can keep them from acting and from speaking out and from doing things. Instead they prefer to observe and to learn and to study, to make sure things are correct, to make sure they remain aware, to make sure that they are doing the right thing. The important thing here is awareness and intuition. But your personal honesty and your personal truth can be somewhat repressed. Instead, you put on a serious face for everyone. Instead, you focus on the system and you try to adhere and to make sure that what you think can be proven objectively according to a strong system or a standard of what is logical and what is correct. The ENFP6 is always running through every scenario, thinking about every what if and every possibility. They are ensuring all the time that they can account for everything so that nothing will catch them off guard, so that nothing will catch them by surprise, so that they can remain stable and so that they can remain secure. And this need for security can keep them from making and taking risks and for doing important things and uh, going into new situations that could bring up growth and that could help them uh, gain new skills and to gain new abilities. This need for security can quench their extroverted side and their feeling side and that can keep them from expressing and being themselves and finding what's beautiful in them. The ENFP7 is running through every potential, every possibility, every what if. Everything they could be, they want to try out. Everything they could see themselves doing, they want to find a test for themselves. How would it feel if I did this or if I did that or if I tried out that? The ENFP7 is an explorer in the true merit of the word. Free, free-spirited and open to change, a catalyst of change. They are always in the process of change, always in testing out something new, always in considering something new fun, free-spirited, and uninhibit uninhibited. But at the same time, they are kind of weighed down, weighed down by a repressed feeling, a repressed question of uh, who am I and what is significant to me and what is meaningful in all of these things I do. What is me? What is me in all of this? That is the question of the ENFP7. The ENFP8 is one of the most honest types in the Enneagram outspoken, true to their beliefs, they speak out for who they are and for what they think is right and what, for what the world should be. They are catalysts, they see the potential, how the world could change, how things could be different and they try to force and ensure that things come to pass. The things they see, the potential they see, that that becomes reality. And so they try to shape and mold reality. And they try to speak out for this. And they try to get other people to see the merit of this as well. But they don't understand why other people don't act, or why other people don't listen. I, why don't people want to do anything? Why, even though I speak about this, and even though I talk about this, why don't anybody want to do anything? That becomes the central issue of the ENFP 8. Finally, the goal of the ENFP 9 is fairness. Fairness in truth, ensuring everybody has spoken out about their truth, that everyone's truth and version of the truth has been brought to the surface. What does he think and what does he think? The ENFP 9 is all about this democratic, fair, balanced version of truth and honesty. They are focused on the honest expression of everyone around them. 
And in here, there is a kind of confinement as they mold and adjust themselves to what is and what they think is fair. They can inhibit their free expression and what they think because they are so focused on ensuring they adjust and that everyone adjusts and adheres to this principle of fairness. Yeah, those are the ENFP Enneagram types, including the three instincts. Which one did you see yourself in the most? Which of these messages do you relate to the most? Does this change how you see your own Enneagram type at all? Does this perhaps wash away some of the stereotypes of your Enneagram type? And does it show how each Enneagram type affects the ENFP? Is there anything you feel about the ENFP that I missed that I should have mentioned as well? If so, leave a comment down below and let's have a good discussion. Also, come join on Discord and get your ENFP tag and your ENFP Enneagram tag. We just launched it on Discord, so now everyone can have a good discussion about what they believe and what Enneagram type they are the most strong in and what type they relate the most to.